we're in a new generation where we're using all sorts of messaging apps to uh, uh, talk with each other. But the problem is uh, if you're using messaging apps to uh, do work, uh, that brings into a whole bunch of legal problems and uh, security problems. You don't know who's looking at that. You don't know if your boss approves of uh, you using that system. It's not audible. The lawyers are going to get mad at you. So you're going to need a different solution than using WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or uh, any of them. Uh, and we're going to talk about that uh, today with Avamo and uh, see their messenger and why is it different for people who are working in a company to message with each other. Who are you? I'm Ram Menon, the founder and CEO of Avamo. Uh, before Avamo, we started the company in March of uh, 2014. Before that, I spent many years in enterprise software uh, as chief marketing officer of TIPCO, and I also ran the social computing division at TIPCO uh, for a while. That's a pretty uh, important job for a, a, a big company guy. Oh, I love, love um, no, it's, uh, I'm enjoying the small company life now. Yeah, <laughs> a lot less meetings. A <laughs> lot less, less meetings, a lot less employees, yeah. and a lot more product stuff to deal with, which I love. So uh, why, why do we need yet another messenger? I mean, we have so many ways now from Slack to Skype to Facebook Messenger to WhatsApp to Snapchat, to all these messengers to talk with people. Why do we need another one? No, actually, that's a great question. And I think uh, what uh, all these messaging apps have done is uh, they have established the fundamental value proposition, which is the power of instant. Messaging is all about instant. Now when you translate that into work, it has a different connotation. Yeah. Who said what, when and how? Who am I talking to? Why am I talking to them? Am I talking to the right people? All these things tend to matter to make sure effective communication happens. Secondly, um, what's the best way to get a hold of somebody with the device that is ubiquitously in their pocket? right and thirdly instant to get hold of somebody but how can you do it in the easiest frictionless manner and which is why messaging seems to have caught everybody's attention uh, for example a, you know the statistic prove over 45 percent of business users have an average of 1.5 messaging apps on their phone already yeah i have more than 10. <laughs> <laughs> but as uh, you said earlier, the problem becomes when you use consumer messaging apps to transact business, that's not what they were designed for. And that's where we saw an opportunity. Yeah. I, I worked at Microsoft and NEC, so a few, and Rackspace now, a few big companies. And big companies uh, have lawyers uh, because they'll get sued because some patent got infringed on or uh, some sales contract. Uh, got screwed up and somebody needs to know what happened on, on that situation, right? And if you're using WhatsApp or a Facebook messenger to do this kind of messaging, the lawyers can't see, can't, uh, can't protect themselves and they get nervous about it, right? That's, uh, Is that that's, sort of what one of the that's, sales... That's actually uh, the fundamental story behind how I started this company. So a few months ago, uh, actually in 2013, um, I was trying to close a deal with a very large uh, company in Europe. And um, the biggest scare that a person who's running a business can have, which is your prospective buyer took off for vacation in the last day of the quarter or last week of the quarter. And this is a CIO of a large company. And I said, how are we going to do the deal? And he said, that's what smartphones are for. And so I spent the whole week sending him about 100 messages on WhatsApp. And my legal and general counsel were really upset sharing confidential pricing information on a consumer network. But I had to close the deal. And once that whole unhappy experience was completed, successfully, but still, I realized there's got to be a better way. Yeah. And that's what led me to think about how to do this better in Obama. How, how, what's your pricing model, just to cover that? It's uh, a couple of dollars per user per month. Okay. 
So it's not quite uh, Yammer. Yammer was charging, uh, I think, up to 25 a user. For no, no, yeah. no, that doesn't make sense. It, yeah. uh, you know, we, we want to make sure messaging is, it's about the power of the ne network is exponential yeah. based on the number of people using it. So, you know. Now, you know, uh, even at Rackspace, we have 7,000 employees and no w one guy says, you must use uh, this app for everything, right? Uh, it's usually a group that uh, finds some new technology, absolutely, adopts it. Absolutely with 10 or 50 people, and then it starts spreading uh, throughout the company. So can I sign up as a group, just a small yes, group, like absolutely. 10 people? So uh, let me try to give you a longer answer to this because I think it, this is the biggest elephant in the room as the cliche goes. Yeah. And I think That's enterprise, why I asked it up close. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean the enterprise software for many years has been targeted at the buyer. Yeah. And mobile has changed that. And so with enterprise software on mobile, especially mobile first, you have to really talk to the user yeah. as well as the buyer. You have to satisfy both. So with that in mind, what we tried to do was to create a mobile first app, which is delightfully simple, looks like a consumer app, acts like a consumer app, and therefore very easy and frictionless for the user, but at the same time has the governance, administration, and security features that the enterprise buyer would like. Yeah. So yes, you're right. Anybody can go download the app for free, you know, uh, and actually use it. But if you want to own your data, yeah. you want to control who gets on and who gets off, and the spam stuff you talked about, you have to buy the premium version, which gives you the server to control. Yeah. There's still a lot of fear in corporations of using cloud computing services, right? Because how do I know that I have control of the data if it's on, on your server, which is actually on a Rackspace or Amazon or right, Microsoft right, or right. something like that, right? It definitely is a, a much lower resistance now than there was about two, two and a half years ago. But I think what we've done is with our enterprise software background, we have handled all the objections up front, yeah. right? So we do encrypt on the device. We also make sure there's no man in the middle issues, and we have hardened VMs on the back end, and that's encrypted. Uh, so we are able to have that conversation and reassure people. For example, one of the pilots that we are doing is with a federal agency, yeah. and uh, it's on the cloud, and they're perfectly okay with that. So you're raising a fair point, but we've seen uh, the objection handling usually I'm able to manage it. The other, uh, and uh, uh, some of the competitors, uh, like Mark Cuban, at, at who's uh, now pushing CyberDust, because mm -hmm. he ran into some legal issues, and he, he realizes mm -hmm. there's a, a problem with a lot of these messages that uh, will come up in legal issues. Uh, he, he says he doesn't store any message on a server. He, it's all all peer-to-peer. -peer. How do you approach that, uh, that well, system architecture? What we do is we offer a, a, a platform that allows you to do a variety of communication modes, right? Uh, so what, what I believe in, it's not that you're only gonna use a self-destruct uh, app. That's a mode of communication. That's you like would, Snapchat. Right? Yeah. Where the message supposedly yeah, right, goes away right. and really so, doesn't go away. So there might be a point in the day when you, at, at least in business, where you want to discuss earnings and that's something that you want to destroy. But at the same time, there may be another point in the day where you want to announce a new acquisition, which is on a messaging tool, you just broadcast it to all your employees. So Avamo allows you to do multiple modes of communication. In this particular case, we have an off the record mode. You move into off the record, you can set the timer on the message, and the message self-destructs. It's deleted from both the phones as well as the server, there's no record. But there's a white mode, normal mode, and companies want those messages to be saved for any e-discovery you know, issues they may have later. Yeah. The other uh, concern that I, uh, I saw come up is if you have an engineering team working in China, for instance, let's say you're at Apple Computer, and uh, you have a team working in China and a team working in Cupertino, and they need to communicate with each other. Well, you know uh, China and America is listening in on the conversations, and China is trying to steal uh, intellectual property. So. Uh, you have to make sure that your uh, system is encrypted very yes. well yes. end to end and that nobody can listen in. Uh, right. How do you guys approach so, that? So that's what I said. Uh, so, no, no, uh, you know, I think, I think it's, a, it's a larger discussion beyond just encryption, yeah. right? There is the whole concept of data privacy and data isolation, which comes in many different ways. But let's talk about encryption. 
we talk, we encrypt on the device. We encrypt to make sure when the, the data is in transit or in motion, as well as on the server. So there's three different encryption models in place, which we feel is pretty solid. But I th also think that we take into account a variety of other things. One is identity, right? If, for example, you are not an employee of the company, uh, then Avamo automatically wipes all the messages off the device that you had with others in your domain. Got it. So if you get laid off or fired or if you it's quit. Gone. It's gone. 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 The, the minute your yeah. email ID is inoperative, people understand you're not you know, uh, uh, a defined user of that domain. And then it becomes just like a consume app. Nothing, nothing company confidential is on. We should take a look at it and keep talking about sure, some of these sure. issues as we uh, talk through the Great. UI. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Rocky, if you could pull up the, uh, the... So there you see, that's the app. It's uh, simple, easy to use. Uh, 10 minutes, you're up and running. Um, one of the key differentiators with Avamo is you can talk to people inside the firewall and here's an example. Uh, you can post locations, messages. You know, uh, it shows you who has sent you at what time. So guaranteed messaging with audit capability on who's read the message at a particular time. And this is really important when you have a group or a department. Yeah. And then the second thing which uh, we feel is really, really important, the ability to converse with people outside the company which normally happens nowadays, right? Yeah. You have four people from your group yeah. and another four suppliers, Yeah. right? So uh, let's talk about that, because uh, uh, first of all, how do you verify somebody works at Rackspace versus outside, or, or works at a specific company out there and not outside? Absolutely, so in the premium version, we ask the administrator, uh, which could be the, the person who, the buyer in this case, to load in the approved phone number and the approved email address. And then therefore- Can you use Active Directory or anything? Yes, we integrate, obviously. We integrate to Active Directory if you want to load the whole company. But as you said, in most cases, people are now doing it in groups. Yeah. So they load in their group uh, and they get invitations. And it's two-factor authentication. You put in your phone number so it authenticates the device. You put in your email and it authenticates your identity as related to your company. Thirdly, when, when you go to their contacts, what we do is something very interesting, which is we sandbox a tab which is called My Company. So we realize a phone can be in the BYOD world, a lot of personal contacts. We don't yeah. want to touch that, and that sits in all contacts. But when you hit My Company, and if you're a premium user, the authenticated people who are part of your company show up in that. Got it. Right. So it's really easy to send a message just to my company yeah. versus uh, sending it out to yeah. customers yeah. or something yeah. like that. And this is the problem with consumer apps, right? In your contact book, your cousin is right next to you know your supplier and you might send the wrong message sometimes. Yeah. Here we have sandboxed it separately. Very cool. Um, keep, keep talking me through what, what, what's on So it. That's, what's that's what I was talking about. Uh, that, that's all contacts on the left and then there's a My Company tab and the My Company tab shows you all the people who are authenticated. Yeah. This, for example, is the Avamo team. Can you split that up into different groups? Because I might oh, deal with the sales group, yes, I might deal yes. with the marketing group, I might yes. deal with the engineering group. So you, what, you could do it two, two ways. One is user-defined groups like, you know, Scoble wants to create his own group and that's fine. You can also do it company mandated. And we see this a lot. For example, finance and auditing group. They, that's a company mandated group and no user can add people to that group, yeah. right? So, so you can do it both ways. Yeah, that's cool. Um, anything else that we want to uh, look at? Oh, so here's uh, off the record. Yeah. So as you see, we want to make sure everybody understands. The whole screen goes black and you can send. Now off the record can be sent to whoever it is. Uh, you want to send a message and then you can actually set a timer. And uh, the timer starts when the other person sees the message. And once the timer's expired, you know, the message disappears. Yeah. Can I send, uh, what kind of media types can I send? Everything. Uh, PDF, uh, every, PDF, Word uh, docs, Word docs, files, uh, pictures, location, there you go, we can pretty much do everything right up front, you know, whatever you want. Very cool. This works on Android and iPhone? Android and iPhone, yes. Yeah. And feature parity across both. Very so cool. one is not less than the other by any means. 
Very cool. Um, it's mobile only though. That, that yes. Be, so there's not a web thing on the on no, Mac I think, or Windows. No, I think that's a, that's a great question you asked. It is mobile only and we feel like based on what we have seen, this is, uh, you know, let me give you an example of an airline. And when we talk to the airline, 13,000 flight attendants, they are truly the 21st century mobile employee because their connection with the company is their uniform and their company issued smartphone. So those are the kind of people we see who really, really, really need real-time communication with their primary business tool being their smartphone. In places like Indonesia and uh, India, one customer told me, my first computer was a Samsung Galaxy phone. So we also see a trend where people don't get laptops like they do here. They only get a smartphone. So we feel that is our market that will accept us the quickest and the fastest. Yeah. Now, uh, Uber drivers, they don't have laptops, they have a phone. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else do I need to know about this? Uh, you covered uh, if, if you have a data retention policy, mm -hmm. so some, pe some companies will want to keep a certain people's messages around forever so right. for legal reasons. At Microsoft, the executives uh, were forced to keep their messages around because of the DOD uh, rulings, the DOJ rulings, anti-monopoly uh, rulings, right? And the other, uh, other people in the company had to delete their email, I think, after six months. So you said some other companies are three months for uh, 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 getting rid of risk uh, around patents and other things. Absolutely. Right? So what we do is, uh, you know, as enterprise software guys, you know, this is not our first rodeo on this. Uh, we have, from the beginning, uh, said that we will support whatever retention policy you have. So, you know, in some cases, they, people want to download it onto their servers, plug into it into some e-discovery system, especially big banks, for example. So we have seen situations where people want to download all the data once a day, once a week, once a month. So whichever model you follow, we can support that. Okay. So federal has a different model, healthcare has a different model, financial services, tech companies. Yeah. And so we've... Uh, just factored that right up front. And that's, I think, why, where we get a lot of interest because it's kind of uh, enterprise. All the issues they care about are all tick box. Yeah. Who do you consider your competitor? I, I, I see you having a little bit of comp competition from like Skype and, and Slack, uh, all the way to uh, the consumer stuff, right? Facebook Messenger and stuff. But there's not a real strong competitor that I've seen. I think, I think, I think there is. Uh, the, no competitor in the enterprise space. We think, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the w depth and width of what we can do. But uh, really the competition is uh, transferring people who have made a habit of using consumer tools and being told not to do that. For example, uh, we were talking to a, a retailer, ostensibly one of the largest retailers in the world. They have Skype, they have Link, they have every collaboration tool that IBM, Microsoft, Cisco has sold in the last 10 years. But all their floor managers use WhatsApp. That's a problem. So they're going to make sure that consumer messaging apps is a firing offense for their employees and they want to move to an enterprise tool. Yeah. So that kind of gives you a sense of where the market is today. Uh, that's, that's very smart. Uh, tell me about how the company is formed and uh, how many people work there and how sure, do you get funded, sure. stuff like that. Sure, so uh, we, uh, I started the company in March uh, of 2014. Uh, my co-founder and I have worked together for eight, ten years at TIPCO, my former VP of Engineering, Sriram. We uh, raised uh, $6.3 in our seed uh, with a host of investors, uh, including Asian investors, uh, who uh, W.I. Harper from China. And we have about 20 employees split between uh, the U.S., Ukraine, and India. Very cool. And where do I get it? On the App Store or on Google Play. And it's Avamo? A it's uh, A-V-A-A-M-O. Is there any reason for the name? Because it's an unusual name? Uh, it is an unusual name. And so, you know, we, we thought about something that, uh, frankly, uh, would be designated as unusual uh, rather than doing something, you know, tap or, or something that sort of it seems obvious. But it is Finnish for open. Very so cool. it's a Finnish name. Very cool. Thanks Thank for you coming very much. In and show it to me. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it.